welcome to the seventh episode of the Gilbo Girls Out of My Mind. Okay, so in this chapter, she talks about uh, Mrs. Violet Valencia, who lives next door to them. And she says, I was about two years old when I first started hanging out with Mrs. V at Mrs. V's house. Mom and Dad hardly left me with anybody at first, but sometimes their work schedules overlapped, and they needed a third person to help out. Mom said Mrs. V was the very first visitor when I came home from the hospital, the first person to just pick me up like any other baby. A lot of my parents' friends had been scared to even touch me, but not Mrs. V. And then she goes on to describe Mrs. V. Um, I like the fact that Mrs. V knows what Melanie, Melody is going through. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mrs. V is also, um, she used, they used to work together as a, uh, both as nurses at a hospital. And uh, mom told me the children there had been crazy about her and she wore the same bright outfits and in the preemie ward and the kids cancer ward, the children burn unit. So she has a lot of experience. Um, and then she talks about how she remembers sitting on Mrs. V's porch that very first time, and Mom and Dad looked concerned, but Mrs. V held me tightly and bounced me on her knees. She must have had a hidden microphone under those flowing, cl uh, flowing clothes. She has one of those voices that can make anybody shut up, turn, and listen. Of course I'll watch Melody, she said with, with certainty. Well, Melody is, well, you know, really special, Dad said hesitantly. All kids are special, Mrs. V had replied with authority, but this one has hidden superpowers. I'd love to help her find them. We can't possibly pay you what this is worth to us, Dad began. Mrs. V had shrugged and said with a smile, I'll appreciate whatever you can give me. My dad looked cheapest. Well, thanks, and I'll get that ramp finished this weekend. I just need to make one more trip to the lumber yard. Now that will be a big help, Mrs. V said with a nod. Melody can be a handful, Mom said, had warned. Mrs. V lifted me in the air. I've got big hands. We want her to reach her highest potential, Dad added. Oh, gag me, Mrs. V said, startling him. Don't get bogged down in all those touchy-feely words and phrases you read in books on disabled kids. Melody is a child who can learn and will learn if she sticks with me. Dad looked embarrassed, but then he grinned. Bring her back in 20 years, he said. You'll have her back home by supper time. So most work days, I ended up at Mrs. V's place for a couple of hours until mom and dad could get home. And when I got older, I went over to Mrs. V's every afternoon after school. I don't know how much they paid her, but it couldn't have been enough. From the very beginning, Mrs. V gave me no sympathy. Instead of sitting me in a special little chair my parents had brought for me, she plopped me on the back in the middle of the floor on a large, soft quilt. The first time she did that, I looked up at her like she was crazy. I cried and I screeched. She ignored me, walked away, and flipped on her CD player. Loud marching band music blared through the room. I liked it. Then she came back and put my favorite toy, a rubber monkey, a few inches from my head. I wanted that monkey. It squeaked when you touched it. But it may as well have been a million miles away, and I was on my back, stuck like a turtle. I screamed louder. Mrs. V sat down on the quilt. Turn over, Melody, she said quietly. Sometimes she can make her voice very soft. I was so shocked I stopped yelling. I couldn't turn over. Didn't she know that? Was she nuts? She wiped my nose with a tissue. You can turn yourself over, Melody. I know you understand every word I say to you, and I know you can do this. Now roll. Actually, I never bothered to try very hard to roll anywhere. I'd fallen off the sofa a couple times and it hurt. So I usually just waited for mom or dad to move me to a comfortable position. Look at how you're lying. You're already on your side, halfway there. Use all that screaming and hollering energy you've got to take you to another position. Toss your right arm over and concentrate. So I did, I strained, I reached, I tried so hard, I farted. <laughs> Mrs. V cracked up, but slowly, slowly, I felt my body rolling to the right. And then unbelievably, plop, I was on my stomach. I was so proud of myself, I screeched. I told you so, Mrs. V said, victory in her voice. Now go get that monkey. I knew better than to protest, so I reached for it. The monkey was now only two inches from my hand. I tried to scoot. My legs kept doing the opposite of what my head wanted them to do. I wiggled. I grabbed a fistful of quilts and pulled. The monkey got closer. You're a smart little cookie, Miss V told me. I gave the quilt another tug, and finally, gradually, 
I had the monkey in my hand. I clutched it and it squeaked as if it was glad to see me. I grinned and made it squeak again and again. After that workout, you must be hungry, she said. She fed me a vanilla shake first and then my veggies and noodles. Mrs. V always serves dessert first and I always eat all my food, the healthy part and then the yummy part too. It's our secret. And then she just goes to talk about all this stuff that and the bonding that her and Miss V had and and uh, how she was tough on her. Um, she even, here's another one, which kind of remind me of uh, Faith when Faith was at Ability Camp because they would have them with their canes and then they would have them drop the canes and fall on top of, um, help me out here, on top of pads um, to, to teach them how to fall and not get hurt. So she did this too. She said, I learned to scoot and then crawl. I never won, uh, win a baby crawling contest, but by the time I was three, I'd learned to get across the room. She made me figure out how to flip myself over from front to back and back to front. She was tough on me. She let me fall out of my wheelchair onto pillows so I could learn how best to catch myself. And that was the point I was getting at. That's what they did at Ability Camp, so that way they could learn best Except to do. Except it's kind of different instead of wheelchair, it's with canes. Yes. Yep. Um, I'm going to say we're the ending of this episode. I think Allie wants to say, which Allie's my pretty baby. Yay, Melanie, you did it! All right. Yay, bye. Okay, see you tomorrow night.